Hey, this is my new modding tutorial. If you watch the old ones, forget everything. Watch this one. Don't watch the other ones. Step one, download this. Open it up, install it. Woo! You did it. Run the game. You should now see dog roll. And mod the gungeon. Congration. Step two. Download Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. If it's no longer 2019 when you're watching this, just download the newest version. Install this one. Although I've seen somebody get away with installing this one. So maybe that one too. Maybe maybe that one. Or just that one. I'm pretty sure this one's fine. In the individual components, I don't know. Make sure you got these things, I, I guess, uh, up to 3.5 at least. This one. And... I'm pretty sure that's all I need, actually. Just the 3.5. Make sure you have 3.5. Launch! Download the example item mod. That zip or the example mod if you're not planning on making item mods but if you are planning on making item mods even if you aren't actually because it doesn't hurt to have it download this once you have this downloaded double click it drag the stuff onto your desktop this right here is your mod project believe it or not this right here is your mod folder this one's gonna go in your enter the gungeon directory this one's gonna go in your repositories folder, wherever that is in, in the Visual Studios thing. For me, it's in users, my name, source, repos. I think that's the default installation directory. So just take your mod project folder and just drop it in here. Open up Visual Studio, open a project or solution, navigate to the solution that you just put in your repos directory. Uh, Here's mine. Click on the mod.sln file. You should have something that looks like this. This solution should have all of the dependencies that you need to be able to start modding without having to worry about setting up references and stuff like that. First thing you want to do is change the name of your mod. For mine, I'm calling it example mod. For the version, 0.0.0 .0 is fine for now. And for text color, this is just the color of the text that's going to get printed in a second here when we log our success message to the console. Don't worry about this example passive.register yet. In fact, I'm going to comment that out by adding two slashes to the beginning of the line. And we should be good to go now. So go up here, click build, build solution or hit control shift B. In the bottom left, you should see build succeeded. Go to your repositories folder, go to your mod project, go to your bin folder, and then go to debug. Grab this mod.dll, and then head to the enter the gungeon steam directory. Go to your mods folder, which should have been created when you installed mod the gungeon. And if you remember the mod folder from earlier that we extracted from the example mod download, you're gonna wanna drop that into your mods folder. So now we have a mod folder for our mod. You're gonna to wanna to delete this mods.txt file down here. You probably won't have a million files in here like I do, but just delete that file. Go into this folder, delete the mod.dll, and then paste this mod.dll from the debug folder into here. You can open up this metadata.txt file, change your author name, change your mod name. You should leave this mod.dll the same unless you've changed the, the name of this file here, the mod.dll. And then we should be able to run the game and your mod should be loaded. So let's go do that. So I'm in the game now. I'm gonna press F2 to open up the console. There's also the tilde button and the forward slash button that you can use to open this console. Uh, and you'll see that example mod version 0.0.0 has started successfully. That means that our mod is working. So that's great. 
Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is create a sim link between these two folders, the debug folder and the regular mod folder, so that we don't have to keep dragging this DLL over here every time we update the mod. Go to start, type cmd, right click and run as administrator, type make link space, open quote, right click on the folder in your mod folder, copy address, Paste the address into here, backslash mod.dll, close quote, space, open quote, right click on the debug folder, copy address, paste it into here, backslash mod.dll, close quote. You're going to want to delete this mod.dll before you hit enter down here because it won't let you create the sim link if the file already exists. Press enter. Now you should see a sim link being created in your mod folder. So now that we have everything else set up, we can start working on our actual mod. Uh, let's start out by just making a quick example passive. I'm just going to go ahead and uncomment this line here. If you go into example passive.cs, which you can click on, it's in scripts over here. Uh, it has an example item name. You can change this to be whatever you want. It has an example item sprite. If you want to add a sprite, you should go over to the resources folder, uh, right click on it, add existing item, path to your sprite, and then make sure that when you click on this, right click properties, Make sure it's an embedded resource. It starts out as a content, but you should make sure it's always an embedded resource. So you can create a path to your sprite. It should start with the namespace that your mod is in. So mod and then the folder path to whatever the sprite is. Uh, in this case, it's in a folder called resources. So it should be mod resources example item sprite. The rest of this is sort of boilerplate stuff. Uh, except for the short description and the long description. The short description is what pops up when you first get the item, and the long description is what shows up in the Ammonomicon. If you want your item to have custom behavior, you should have it extend passive item. Then down here where we add the component, instead of adding passive item, you should add your own item class. But for now, we'll just go with a plain passive item that has stat modifiers on it. This is how we add the item to the item pools. You should change this to be a short mod ID so that if someone else names their item the same name, it will have a unique name. So for me, I usually put KTS for Kyle the Scientist, but you should change it to be whatever you want. Something short, sweet, that people don't have to type a lot. For now, I'll leave it as example. Then you can use item builder.add passive stat modifier to add a passive stat modifier to your item. This one is a health modifier. It adds one to your health stat, and it is an additive modifier, which most modifiers are, instead of uh, multiplicative, which is the other option. It also adds another stat modifier for coolness. Down here, you can set the item quality. For this one, we set it to C. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your start method calls your example passive classes register method. And if you have that going, then you should be able to build with Control shift b And in the game, you should be able to give yourself the item. In this case, the command would be give example colon example item name. It's got a little placeholder sprite for you. Here's the name, here's the short description, and here's the long description. And that's how you add passive items. To the game active items are a little more complicated but there's plenty of examples on my github i'll leave a link in the description so that you can check it out but if you go in here to the phase one items or phase two items or phase three items you can scroll through my code and see how exactly i make all the different items that i make in my kyle's item pack mod with enough experience and practice, you can add pretty much anything you want to the game. Almost anything is possible. I wish you guys the best of luck.